So let's take a look at just how easy it is to create characters using Mechanim in Unity 4. In this example, I have a designed character that I want to apply animation to. And I also have a number of pieces of motion capture data stored in FBX. So these things aren't much to look at, but they contain a number of motion capture takes that we can use to apply to our actually nicely modeled character. So the first thing to do is to turn our character into an avatar. So all I need to do there is check the create avatar box and hit apply. And then as soon as I go into configure, I'll see that Unity has recognized all of the rigging inside my character. So it's done this with a combination of the naming conventions that I've used for my bones and also checking the actual hierarchy that they're in, so the order that they're in inside the model. So that's now completely ready to go. I can just hit done and go back to my scene. So I drag that character in and he's ready to have animation applied to him. So what we need to do with that is to take our motion capture data, so an idle, jump, runs, and narrow it down to parts of that motion capture data and find out where the actual loops are. So as you can see here, um, this contains several animations and it's got different takes that have been named run right, run and run left when it was created uh, in the Motion Capture Studio. So what I can do is start making actual clips instead of available clips that I can start working with. So as soon as I hit plus, what Unity does is to take the first um, thing that it finds. So instead of run right, I don't want to work with that take. I'm going to show you how to do a simple run cycle with the actual run take that's in there. So the run that I have here isn't actually looping. So if I press play, you can see that it's a guy that started to run in the studio and he's been captured. So we want to turn this into a loop. So what we have to do this are these little stops, kind of like you would do in video editing package. We're going to select an in and out point within the overall um, scale of the motion capture data. So I can drag these stops around and what that allows me to do is to look at the preview at the bottom and find a good point where my character's left foot is hitting the ground. That's going to be the basis of the loop because I want to have the poses match at the start and the end. And Unity helps me do this because when I drag the end point, I can find a great point that it's going to loop up and you'll see that all of these lights turn to green when it's correct. So Unity is looking at the poses, making sure they match. The other great thing is I've got these checkboxes that I can check to ensure that the poses match perfectly, that the running is going straight so there's no rotation, and also so that the height doesn't vary, so that your characters don't move up and down as they run. So now if I hit play, you can see it's perfect. But without those checkboxes, I'll have a glitch in the animation. So these are basically doing the corrective work that would normally take maybe an hour and a half of working with Motion Builder or some kind of uh, animation package. So instead Unity is taking all the pain out of that and letting you pick that part out of the animation. So that's done. So now I'm going to go ahead and use that same technique on the same FBX and pick out Run Left and Run Right. So now that I've done that, I now have my Run animation that we just saw and I have Run Left and Run Right, all taken from the same FBX and previewed using my character. What I need to do now is to create an animation controller for the character. So if I select my character in the scene, I can see that there's an animator controller required. So what I'm going to do is to create a new one of those in my demo folder. So I'm going to go to create and choose animator controller. So I'm going to call this runner dude. So this runner dude uh, is basically a state machine that we're going to apply to our parkour guy. So parkour guy first off needs that applying. So I'm going to drag and drop that on to the inspector to apply it. The cool thing about that is now all I need to do is to create states within this machine. So the first state for any character is going to be idle. So I'm going to go into my idle animation, pick out the actual idle and drop it in. You'll see it's highlighted in orange, which means that this is the default clip. So now I can take the three other animations from my runs clip, run left, run and run right, and create a blend tree out of them. So a blend tree is something that you create to combine several pieces of animation into one state for your character. So when my character is running, he needs to be able to run forward, but he also needs to be able to turn depending on what inputs are being used. So I'm going to go to right click and say create from blend tree. 
So I have a new blend tree here and I'm going to call that runs as well. So I'm going to double click on this and I go into my blend tree and you can also see that I'm inspecting it in the inspector on the right. So I need to add pieces of motion. So those motions are the animations for running forward, left and right. So I'm going to add a motion field and I'm simply going to drag and drop my run left, run and run right into those. So now you can see that in the blend tree, I've got those three elements. Okay, so the other awesome thing about the blend tree is that I can also use the new preview window in the inspector to take a look at how it's working, how those animations are being blended together. So I can press play here and then go back to my controller window and use this slider to take a look at how the run will go into the run left and run right. So I can change direction. What you should notice about this as well is that the feet are actually pivoting on where they hit the floor. So we're doing some very clever tricks here to actually make sure that they are placed correctly rather than turning around the root of the character. So the feet placement is always accurate. So I'm going to go back to my base layer and I'm going to create a transition between those two points. So to do this I just need to right click and drag to and from the idle going to the runs so that I can come in and out of it. So basically then all I need to do is to create events which are controlled by scripts for speed based on input and direction also based on input. So I'm going to go through and create some new events here. So the first one is going to be a float because it's based on speed input from my uh, controller. Then I'm going to create another one for direction and I'm going to create a boolean a toggle which simply states whether I'm jumping or not. Then I can click on these transitions and specify what causes the character to go between those two points. So on idle what I want to be able to do is say that when a certain value is greater than so speed for example is greater than let's say 0.1 then we're going to transition from idle into running so it's going to start to move away once I start to move the controller forward and then to go from runs back to idle what I'm going to do is to do a similar thing I'm going to say less than so if speed is less than 0.1 I'm going to transition back then finally what I'm going to do is to go and grab my jump drop that in as an independent state and we're going to say for the sake of argument that you can only jump if you're running and we're going to simply drag back and forth between those points to go from running into jump I'm going to make sure that the player has pressed the jump button so I'm going to say if jump then transition what we're going to do to transition back is use exit time. So that's the default uh, with this system. It simply means that once we get to the last kind of 10% of that animation, we're going to transition back to the run. So that is our state machine in a very basic sense, complete for a simple character that can run around. Now all I need to do is to go back to my parkour guy and I'm going to add a very simple script which is going to speak to those events speed direction and jump. So I've added a script called avatar control and it looks like this. So I simply address my animator component and I use get component to address that and then I set the different events using these set bool and set float commands and I use a simple input dot get axis in order to find uh, either my cursor keys or my uh, Xbox controller or whatever kind of input I wanted to use. So that script speaks to those events. So as soon as I apply that script to my parkour guy, I'm ready to start running him around. So I'm gonna press play, and you can see that now I can start running my guy around. And what you should notice as well is that in the state machine window, the controller window down at the bottom, I'm getting a live preview of everything that's happening. So as I run forward, you can see that these yellow lines represent the kind of state that I'm currently in. And as I let go, I blend back to idle and there's idle running. Then as I press my jump button, I get that nice jump. And as soon as that jump's finished, it's going back. 
But of course right now I can't actually see what's going on. So what I'm going to do is go to my main camera and I've got a simple smooth follow script on there. So I can now follow my character around and use my animation states to drive him. So a very simple process just to set up a character from scratch using animation data that we've got from motion capture but also don't forget that you can get the same animation that you do by hand from 3ds max or maya or moda or any of those kind of standard packages and use that animation data as well you don't have to have access to motion capture but the cool thing is that we're going to be giving away motion capture data with unity 4 and keep giving you more with the asset store as well now the other cool thing that i can do with mechanim is make use of retargeting now retargeting is the thing that's going to save you uh, a ton of workflow time and also a ton of memory at runtime. So I can take my parkour guy that's running around and has a state machine already made for him and use that same control system on a completely different asset. So in my project I also have some goblins that I had taken from the asset store and I'm going to drag one of these in. All I need to do in order to reuse the same state machine that I've got down here is to grab it from my demo folder, drop it on as the controller to use, and also drop on the same script. And now I'm using the same asset on both characters. So as soon as I hit play, I can run these two around in exactly the same way. And I can jump, and because they're different proportions, she's got shorter legs, so she can't run as fast. So it's realistic retargeting of all of that motion onto a smaller skeleton. And that's just part of the magic of mechanism.